It's 2021 and the Nintendo Switch is dominating the market, selling like crazy. But what about their previous console? I am the Game Collector and this is Second Opinion Games. And today we're gonna play the Wii U in 2021. Second Opinion Games. So what's the online status of the Wii U? Well, Splatoon, you could jump into a match nearly any time of day. Of course, you could always play Splatoon 2 on the Switch, but they really changed a couple of little things about how the game's played, and many people still prefer to play the Wii U version more than the Switch version. So I gotta jump into that nearly any time I want to get a good Splatoon game on. Also, Smash Brothers, whether you want to play one-on-one -on -one or just a free-for-all battle, you could jump in absolutely no problem and probably only have to wait about a minute or two tops before you find someone to really compare your skills against. And Mario Kart 8 always has people playing. Sure, the battle maps aren't really here, but it's still a lot of fun to race around the world with all of my friends from around the world. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 seems to be where the party's at. Not having to pay that price for an Xbox Live membership or handing over some extra money to Sony. No, without paying anything, you could play Black Ops 2 for seemingly forever. I was just on nearly all night last night, fragging people and killing people dead. And this is the very first time I even put it in my system. And I was still holding my own with some incredibly good people. And new people just kept on joining in as we were playing so getting into team deathmatch is no problem at all i even managed to play a couple games of zombie mode however playing anything other than team deathmatch is kind of difficult normally you have to meet up with a whole bunch of people in team deathmatch and then tell them to get on to a special party at a certain time and then everyone just floods in and you play that game variant and then the party goes on from there Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for the Wii U is not only alive and kicking, but it seems to be partially keeping the Wii U on life support. But how about Mario Maker? Well, sadly, at the end of January, Nintendo will shut down the classic Mario Maker 1. I actually prefer to make levels in the first Mario Maker game because the Wii U tablet fits perfectly in my hand, and I could use that stylus to drag and drop in nearly everything. And we're really missing out on some great levels like Pause for Effect and a whole bunch of levels that were made by tiny children that don't seem to know anything about level design, but it definitely got their creative juices flowing. The first Mario Maker was a tremendously epic video game, so much so that Nintendo is still offering it for a full $60 on the Wii U eShop, even though they're gonna pull the plug like any minute. So that's pretty disgraceful, Nintendo, and it's also disgraceful about all of the terrific levels that we're gonna lose. But how about we bring the party home to the couch to play with some friends? Well, then I recommend checking out Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Because there hasn't been so many good Marvel movies in the past year, I really sunk my teeth into this one really hard. It starts off feeling like a full-on action video game where you swap between the different Marvel characters, but it's really a puzzle action adventure movie. You could actually probably stitch together pieces of this video game and and make a full-on modern Marvel movie that is almost as good as some of the movies that Marvel actually made, and better than some other ones like Captain Marvel itself. This is also terrific for playing with the Wii gamepad, because you can set it up so one person plays on the gamepad and the other person plays on the TV, or you could share the screen on the TV. Either way, this is a perfect bonding experience for that special someone or just your little brother. But let's invite a few more people over to play a game of Islands, where you get to launch Franks. You'll be passing the Wii U tablet around, and try to strategically land your Franks on the buoys to get the most points. You could play it safe, or try to just screw over the person sitting next to you. Either way, this is going to be a terrific time. There are quite a few levels here too, and a little bit of randomness just scattered in enough to make you worry and sweat, and to keep every game on your toes. 
goes, but not enough that skill isn't required to beat this game. There's also the game of Sketch. It's sort of just like win, lose, or draw, but better because it just happens right in front of you, and sometimes you're going to draw some crazy stuff, and other times you cannot believe how fast people guess what the heck you're trying to draw, even before you figure it out. Quite frankly, sometimes you're going to spell it out almost exactly what it should be, and people still can't guess what it is. It's frustrating, it's fun, and if you haven't heard of either one of those games, well, it's part of the WarioWare games on the Wii U. And keep in mind, this is one of those games that never left this console. Just like Paper Mario Color Splash, this is going to go down history as being one of the least played Nintendo properties ever. And it's a shame because there is some darn good storytelling here. Now the main battle element of coloring the cards and flicking them forward with the Wii U tablet seems a little convoluted. And that's because it is. And that's really the only thing that holds this game down. The graphics are beautiful. Painting in this world feels totally awesome. Find the find all the new and hidden secrets around every corner and the fact that you don't actually level up at all you just have a lot of fun playing and experiencing the funny storyline and this is a terrific game where nearly anything could happen in this crazy cardboard world and often does it's also really streamlined so even if you don't play for a couple weeks you could jump right into a game and play through a level in about a half hour and then set it down a couple weeks later and no exactly what's going on. This is an incredible RPG, and it's a shame that not many people are going to play it. But in the past year, some games actually got physical releases on the Wii U. I know, just when everyone thought it was dead. Check out Shakedown Hawaii, which is a terrific overhead experience. It's similar to Grand Theft Auto 2, where you have to run around and get into missions, and then basically run amok and kill everyone, or get into some drive-by shootings. The graphics here are meant to be sort of this pseudo 16 slash 32 bit style, which works quite well for the game. The story is also hilarious as you play as an old man as a crazy twist on the whole action shoot -em up environment instead of some young buff kid. You're just taking everyone down as an old dude with bad knees trying to make sense of this crazy mixed up world which he's now in. This is one of the funniest games I've played all year. Also getting a physical release was Finding Teddy 2, which is more like a Zelda 2 inspired adventure where you play as a little girl trying to defeat the big bad evil thing. And you'll be running through lots of different worlds and hacking and slashing in a 2D world and platforming up a storm, finding stuff in treasure chests and unlocking a new way through, just like a Metroidvania style event. The the storyline here is far more somber, but is definitely as engaging as any other major retail release. Also because you probably missed it as these games were extremely limited in their run, you could still pick them up on the eShop for like one third or one eighth of the price that you could find them on eBay right now, and you don't have to worry about which version of its PAL or whatnot, it'll just run totally fine. Why we're on the eShop, we better buy up as many of these eShop titles as we possibly can because they could shut this down at any moment. After all, the Wii U is a few years old by now and it's getting a little long in the tooth. So I recommend checking out Armilo, where you play as a armadillo on a spherical world. It's sort of like a mix of Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Mario Galaxy and done in the best possible way. The music here totally rocks with its synth techno jams that seem to go on and it also challenges you to do as best as you possibly can in the fastest possible time. Armilo is a really fast character and you have a boost capability, smashing through things, and even inventive ways to take down the different bosses in this game. There's also some 2D levels just thrown in here for an extra challenge, which means that the most hardcore retro gaming fans are gonna fall in love with this not Sonic the Hedgehog game that seems to be better than anything that he put out in the past 10 years. 
But maybe we should slow things down with Little Inferno, a game where you just buy stuff from a catalog, throw it in your fireplace, and watch it burn. Sometimes to hilarious effects, where if you take a school bus and you catch it on fire and run it into an atomic bomb, what's gonna happen? Everyone's gonna blow up. It's hilarious to watch some of these items burn if you put a poo-poo kitty in here or maybe just a guy that won't stop screaming because he's on fire. It's kind of cool, but the game itself really isn't that simple. You see, you have to create combos to unlock more stuff to burn and also to get into the nitty-gritty of the storyline, which is creepy at some spots and darn right scary at others. What's really going on in this world and why do we have to catch all of our possessions on fire. I bet you cannot wait to find out in this incredibly great fireplace simulator. If that's too dark for you, then you should play some Pushimo World, the bright and cheery game where you play as a dog sumo wrestler thing, just pushing blocks around, trying to get to the very top. If Catherine was your jam on the Xbox 360 or the PS5 or any of those other consoles that had that game, well, then this is a little more lighthearted version of that, where you could actually take your time to figure out how to beat it. Also, some of these puzzles are downright brain destroying trying to figure out how to get to the top and when you're done and completely beat the game well then you could make your own puzzles and then see if your friends can beat them in the fastest possible time it's creative it's bright and cheery and it's just what you need to get through some of the more somber days of the world outside which leads me to my final game today. Now, I'm not much of an RPG guy because I could barely read, so making a game based on spelling words seems like something that I wouldn't be interested at all in. But Bacon Bandit's games made a game called Letter Quest Remastered, which has quickly become one of my most favorite games to play if I have either 10 minutes or four hours of my life that I want to waste. Basically, you play as a Grim Reaper-like character and you have to spell letters to destroy other characters in this world. There's also different things that you could buy to level up to become more powerful, a full-on RPG story here, and you could even get extra points by spelling the word bacon. There's also bacon power-ups that restore health. That's right, mom and dad. All the bacon I've been eating has just been restoring my health. And that's why this is one of my favorite games that I've played in 2021 and probably ever. But of course, that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I had a great time making it and hopefully I encourage you to play a little bit more Wii U and maybe hit up that eShop before it gets shut down. Hopefully you had time to play Mario Maker before they pulled the plug on that and I love how I can still play Call of Duty Black Ops all night long and get into some great matches with some friends from across the world. So if you are still playing your Wii U in 2021, let me know in the comment box down below and also check out some of my other Wii U videos. So until later, I will see you again, guys.